Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a science fiction action film, District 9. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a whole world watching the unfolding of an extraterrestrial mothership park above Johannesburg, the people believe it will be the first contact to ever happen with aliens. However, when the military arrives inside the mothership, the creatures show malnourished and unhealthy vitality signs. So the government of Johannesburg created a temporary aid for the prawns, a massive campsite called District 9 just below their mothership, to accommodate a population of 1.8 million prawns. Due to the unpreparedness of the government, they put up fences and militarized District 9. However, over time, District 9 turns into a slum. People theorize why the mothership cannot operate, because they find footage of the command module falling from the mothership. For years, the government spent money to protect the prawns, leading to a lessened prioritization of the people. The residents of Tembisa riot to move the prawns away from their town. They show disgust, and beg to let the prawns leave their planet alone. 20 years later, the public pressures the government to relocate the prawns. So the government hires the multinational United, a weaponry manufacturer, to handle the eviction of the prawns into a new settlement, farther from South Africa's cities. Inside the MNU meeting, the director announces the plan to his workers, they will go to the slums, and let the prawns sign a form for agreement of eviction. Once signed, they will transfer to the new settlement. The director assigns the bureaucrat, his son-in-law, as the field officer to command the field work in the slum directly. The bureaucrat's wife showcases the handicrafts made by her husband for her. The bureaucrat creates crafts for gifts, because he believes it is more meaningful. The cameraman films the bureaucrat throughout the time he is working as a field officer. In the MNU Weapons Depot, the cameraman follows the bureaucrat. He records the bureaucrat introducing his assistant, and meeting up with other people, like his colleagues and his security guard, when they go to the slums. Unfortunately, the bureaucrat bitterly experiences an encounter with the colonel, he only wants to call out the PMC mercenaries, for bringing excessive and unnecessary ammunition to the field. The colonel only insults him and the cameraman. Later on, the mercenaries, along with the bureaucrat and his team, go to the slums. The bureaucrat's team comprises the assistant, the security guard, and the cameraman. After an hour, they arrive at the slums. Unfortunately, when they arrive, the prawns already attack some mercenaries. However, despite the situation, the bureaucrat and his team proceed to the mission. They knock on different shacks to get the prawn scrawl on the forms. Some prawns are uncontainable, some signs willingly, and some create a mess. In District 9, Zone 4, the bureaucrat and his team have already cleared 1,018 forms so far. They use cat food as a bargain for the prawns to sign the forms. The authorities and scholars believe the prawns stranded on Earth are the workers that need higher leaders to command them. Because they observe, the prawns barely take any initiative. While residents avoid the prawns, it is different inside the slum. The Nigerian gang exploits the aimlessness of the prawns where they scam, associate themselves with alien weaponry, and even interspecies prostitution. A paralyzed and powerful gang leader leads them. The bureaucrat and his team make a joke about not messing with the gang, or else they meet death. While checking into houses, the bureaucrat and his team stumble upon a shack with 50 prawn eggs. He explains that the hanging cow inside the hut with attached tubes gives nutrients to the prawn eggs. In the end, he calls back up to burn the eggs. Upon entering different shacks, they find stocks of alien weaponry hidden. The truth about MNU's involvement in the transferring of prawns is that it is not for humanitarian reasons, but to gather the alien weaponry for the MNU to utilize. The MNU receives the confiscated alien weapons for testing. Upon experimenting, they apprehend the arsenal only works when used by the prawns. Because any prawn technology or weapons only interacts exclusively with prawn DNA, Meanwhile, three prawns, Christopher, his young son CJ, and Paul seek alien fuel and prawn technology at District 9 landfills. CJ, fortunately, finds one after 20 years, which excites Christopher. The two aliens return to Paul's shack, while CJ goes to their home. Inside the shed is a hidden room with an intricate build workbench. The workbench aims to transform the gathered fluid into fuel. The workbench successfully converts and creates the fuel, and they transfer it into a silver cylinder, Unfortunately, the bureaucrat and his team reach the shack. Christopher hides while Paul deals with them. But things go sour in the encounter, and the security guard holds Paul in place while the bureaucrat investigates the shack. He finds the cylinder and fidgets with it, until the fuel sprays onto his face. He immediately stops the cameraman to stop recording. The bureaucrat returns to the camera, showing himself confiscating the cylinder. 
they return outside and taunt Paul. But Paul hurls the security guard to his shack and pushes the bureaucrat onto a barrel of fire. The colonel and his mercenaries arrive, annihilating Paul. As for the bureaucrat, he burns his arm. He lets the medic treat his arm while he comments how fast Paul attacks. The bureaucrat and his team continue to collect sprawls, and they reach Christopher's house. The bureaucrat gives candy to CJ, but CJ only throws it at him. The bureaucrat and the guard get mad, and decide to inspect the shack. Inside, they discover monitors and other equipment. While checking, the bureaucrat gags and vomits a lot of liquid. Unfortunately, it is not the only thing. Besides vomiting, the bureaucrat experiences more symptoms such as nail loss, headache, and nosebleed. He tries to restrain them, but it only worsens. As for Christopher and CJ, they search for the cylinder, but it is gone. They trade cat food with the prawns at the Nigerian gang's base for the prawn mechanized battle suit. However, the Nigerian gang kills one of the prawn traders for the gang leader to eat its flesh. They believe eating the prawn's flesh can grant them healing, and the power to use the weapons they massed from the prawns. The bureaucrat returns to his residence after work. Upon his arrival, his wife throws a surprise for his promotion. He tries to pretend he is okay, but excuses himself to vomit in the bathroom. He coughs while they cut the cake, then vomits black fluid onto the food and passes out. The bureaucrat admits himself into the hospital in the morning, while his wife waits for him in the waiting area. The doctor sees the bureaucrat's injured arm become a prong claw. The doctor immediately calls MNU military force, and they place the bureaucrat in a body bag. They transfer him into the laboratory of MNU, and they examine his body. Upon his stay in the lab, a staff discovers the cylinder that he confiscated. The bureaucrat tries to warn them, but none listens. 16 hours after exposure, MNU brutally treats the bureaucrat as a subject for experimentation. They force him to use the alien weaponry, and they learn the formed claw of the bureaucrat holds the same DNA as a prawn. After the experiment, the researchers, including the director, agree to kill the bureaucrat. They need to harvest his organs and blood while still in a metamorphosis stage, to use his perfect balance of DNA between alien and human into biotechnology. The biotechnology they obtain can benefit their profits. Upon hearing this, the bureaucrat attacks the researchers and escapes from the lab. The director informs his daughter, the bureaucrat's wife, that the bureaucrat is changing into a prawn. Then he receives a call from the lab that the bureaucrat escaped. He orders the mercenaries to hunt down the bureaucrat alive. Outside, the bureaucrat scavenges food, clothes, hides, and tries to contact his friends and family for help, but nobody cares. When the bureaucrat attempts to buy food, he hears the broadcast on television reporting slanderous news. The broadcast announces the bureaucrat as a wanted fugitive and escapee, who developed a transmissible disease from mating with prawns. 31 hours after being exposed, the bureaucrat hides in District 9, hoping no one will find him. 40 hours after exposure, the bureaucrat searches for food, and even attempts to eat cat food. But he cannot digest it, and ends up breaking down. Then he receives a call from his wife, wanting him to leave her alone because of disgust. The bureaucrat defends himself from the lies, but his wife only cries and ends the call. He cuts one of his claws, and endures the agony afterward. Suddenly, mercenaries' helicopters search for him. He quickly hides and stumbles upon Christopher's shack. Due to the loss of blood from his mutilated wound, he passes out. The bureaucrat wakes up, and finds himself inside the missing command module dropship, hidden underneath Christopher's shack. Christopher asks the bureaucrat where the cylinder is, and the bureaucrat says the lab confiscated it, CJ explains that fuel is needed to operate the mothership again, and Christopher adds that a machine in the mothership can even help the bureaucrat reverse his transformation. However, retrieving the cylinder is a suicide mission. 56 hours after exposure, and the transformation of the bureaucrat reaches half of his torso. His skin sheds to accept the alteration in his body. Suddenly his wife calls him, promising assurances, but he does not know it is a trap set up by the MNU and mercenaries to track down his location. On the other side, CJ confesses he misses their planet and wants to go home, but Christopher says they cannot go home without the fuel. Christopher shows the new settlement offered to them, but the bureaucrat enters, convincing them they should not go to the new territory, because it is smaller than the shack, like concentration camps. The bureaucrat once again asks for clarification on what will happen once they retrieve the fuel. Christopher then reminds the bureaucrat that the mission is suicide, and there are no weapons. But out of desperation to be normal again, the bureaucrat offers to buy weapons from the Nigerian gang. The following day, he goes to the gang's base to buy alien weapons, but they aggressively treat him instead. The gang leader even commands his gang to cut off the bureaucrat's claw arm. 
While the bureaucrat struggles to free himself, he finds the alien weapons. He immediately grabs an alien sonic gun and shoots at the gang members. Thanks to the powerful sonic gun, he gains the upper hand and then commands the gang members to bag the weapons for him. The gang leader is curious about getting a prawn claw and threatens the bureaucrat, who's retreating with the alien weapon, that he will have him one day. The mercenaries arrive at Christopher's shack, only to find it empty. Because Christopher and the bureaucrat are at the MNU base, reaching the MNU to retrieve the cylinder. Upon arriving in the lab, the bureaucrat successfully gains the cylinder, but for Christopher, he finds skin prawns, including Paul, for barbarous experimentation. He dumbfoundedly stares at his dead kind, while the mercenaries who recently arrived, start shooting in the lab. The bureaucrat shouts at Christopher to think about his son while firing at the mercenaries, whose body explodes once shot by the alien arsenal. Christopher snaps back to reality, and creates a bomb from scraps in the lab. Christopher bombs the wall, they steal an MNU car, driving away to the slums. The colonel and his mercenaries follow their vehicle. Upon arriving at Christopher's shack, Christopher quickly gives CJ the cylinder to operate the dropship below. Then Christopher admits that they need to wait three years to cure the bureaucrat until they save the prawns out of the experiments. Furious, the bureaucrat knocks down Christopher, and leaves him in the shack while he descends into the dropship. He watches CJ insert the cylinder, and the whole dropship comes to life. The bureaucrat attempts to operate the dropship, while the colonel reaches the shack, and finds Christopher inside. He threatens Christopher to shoot him, bragging about loving to see prawns die. But suddenly, the ground shake. The colonel and Christopher escape the hut, and they watch the dropship wobbly fly in the air. The colonel orders to fire the dropship, and a missile immediately destroys one of its engines. Christopher watches his dropship crash, and he falls onto his knees, knowing that returning home is now impossible. The colonel, with his mercenaries, locks up Christopher, and seizes the bureaucrat from the dropship into their car. Suddenly, the Nigerian gang ambushes the mercenary convoys, colliding against their cars. The gang fights against the mercenaries to retrieve the bureaucrat, leaving out Christopher. Hidden on the dropship, CJ operates a panel to activate the mothership once again. As for the Nigerian gang, they hold the bureaucrat captive. They perform a ritual, preparing to cut off his prawn self-hormone let-go hand. However, something comes to life. CJ, still in the dropship, successfully activates the mothership and all prawn technology, including the battle suit built by the prawns hidden in the gang's base. The suit scans the base, detecting the bureaucrat as an ally, while the gang members as enemies. The suit showers the base with shootings, killing every member of the gang. While the mercenaries outside the base interrogate Christopher about the revived mothership, Christopher keeps his mouth shut. A unit of mercenaries smokes out the bureaucrat hiding in the gang's base. With no choice, he equips the suit. He leaves the base while armored with the suit. The bureaucrat sees the mercenaries holding Christopher captive. At first, he shows no care and even trades Christopher for the sake of his freedom, until he hears the colonel order his mercenaries to kill Christopher. Out of conscience, the bureaucrat returns to Christopher, killing the mercenaries. He saves Christopher, and they both rush to the dropship. While they travel, more mercenaries come to shoot them. To save Christopher some time, the bureaucrat remains behind. Christopher wants to bring the bureaucrat along, but he knows someone needs to fend off the mercenaries. Christopher promises the bureaucrat he will return in three years to cure him back into his usual self. The bureaucrat proceeds on killing every mercenary who's shooting at his suit, where blood stains the land. Unfortunately, he slips his shots towards the colonel, leaving him alive. Eventually, Christopher arrives at the dropship, and commands the mothership to extract the dropship from the ground. A tractor beam emerges from the middle of the mothership, and it levitates the dropship upwards. The colonel sees the dropship leaving, and commands to fire another missile, but the bureaucrat in suit grabs the missile. The missile explodes, destroying the left arm of the suit, but fortunately, sparing his self homorn let go hand, the dropship successfully reunites with the mothership, which angers the colonel. The colonel showers his anger by damaging the battle suit until it becomes inoperable. 74 hours after exposure, the bureaucrat leaves the suit, crawling away. His left eye enlarged in yellow, like the prawns. The colonel corners the bureaucrat, pointing a gun at his head. When suddenly prawn slum surrounds the colonel, they mob on him, tearing his body by part for them to eat it. The movie ends with people rejoicing as the mothership leaves the earth. Then, the bureaucrat's assistant exposes the MNU's illegal genetic research program. The government transfers the 2.5 million aliens into District 10, and demolishes District 9 after the resettlement. Then, they show the bureaucrat's wife holding a handcrafted metal flower, believing the others comment about it being trash. 
At the landfill, the bureaucrat is now fully transformed into a prawn, making a metal flower. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.